In the 80s, this would have been a whole day of BMX fun. At least until the board broke. Then you take the two pieces and stack them and just make the ramp a lot steeper. Only real ones know about this combo. Bananas and cornflakes. This is a great combination. This is how I ate cornflakes growing up, and it's how I eat cornflakes still today. As a matter of fact, if I don't have a banana in the house, I'm probably not going to eat cornflakes for breakfast that morning. When I was young, I thought this was the epitome of wealth and sophistication. I do remember those commercials, but I don't think I ever ate it before. Matchbox cars in the carry case. You were pretty cool if you had a full case of cars. I think I actually liked Matchbox cars better than I did Hot Wheels. It seems like they had a little more variety and maybe more modded type cars or something. Like some of those that's here in this case. Our TVs were never stolen in the 80s. That was one good thing about these super heavy wood panel TVs. Nobody certainly wasn't going to walk out of the house with them pretty easily. Let alone walking out of the stores with them. Now this game is called Dodgeball. And if you play your cards right, the person you hate the most will be crying like a little <laughs> within minutes. Dodgeball bring back some memories. I actually threw one so hard one time that it hit the bleachers and popped. Everybody just kind of stopped and stared at me for a minute. I just found my old boombox in the attic. Does anyone have 22 size D batteries I can borrow? That was one of the worst things about all the old electronics. They always took C and D batteries. And they always took at least four, if not eight, and sometimes even twelve. Which back then, batteries weren't that bad a price. Have you guys seen the battery prices today? I mean, they're crazy. They just keep getting worse and worse all the time. You can pay $25 and get like 12 double A's or something. Electric Avenue closed. When you're so bad at catching Smurfs, you're forced to find a new job. I have to say that is a pretty good description there. He really does look like him, doesn't he? Who knows what his name was on the Smurfs? Put it down in the comments. This is what a serious mixtape looked like. A t-shirt can't cause blind rage. The t-shirt causing me blind rage. This was a snack when I was growing up. Yeah, you could pick a tomato off the vine, put a little salt on it, and eat it. The couches of my childhood. How many can you name? I'm going to be honest here. I want to know how much. Scientist, you can't hear a picture. 80s kids, we gave my dog a mullet. That's just funny. I hope they named him MacGyver. When trying to sneak a piece of candy, this was the loudest lid. Yes. I can confirm. I'm this old. It went well with all the other wood grain furniture and walls. You might be old, but are you this old? Yep, California raisins. I used to collect these. We're having company. Go get the fancy cups. This is what us kids might have went and got. But this isn't what our parents was asking for. Who remembers the McDonald's LT? Lettuce and tomato on this side stays cool. The beef patty on this side stays hot. I need to bring this back, as well as the quality of the food that they had back then versus now too. Might have been cheap food back then, but at least it was still real. What 80s song would you be listening to driving down this road? I'd say one that nobody is saying is On the Road Again by Will and Nelson. This old Plymouth is for sale in a junkyard. But for some reason, no one wants to take it home and restore it. If you know what that reason is, put it in the comments. Seriously? I step out of the garage for a minute, and these scavengers are already stealing parts. The G.I. Joe aircraft carrier. I don't think I ever saw one of those in real life. They say in the 80s I was the best game system around, but I have no memory. I don't think that most kids today can handle the fact that they couldn't save the game, and when they ran out of lives, that that was it, the game's over, you gotta start all over from the beginning.
Only in the 80s could a kid turn into a wolf in the middle of a basketball game and they finish the game. This is basically true. You could have probably broke your leg in a game and a coach would have been like, you're all right, just walk it off. We only got 30 seconds left, get back in there. The good old days. Yeah, you didn't have to buy all these big race tracks and everything, you just go out and make your own little track. Remember when typing was a high school class? Yes, yes I do. That's how I learned to type. And all the keys on the typewriters didn't have any writing on them. They were just blank. So not only did you have to learn how to type, you had to figure out where the keys were to start with. The first day that I walked in the class, I saw that. And I looked around the class and I saw a big poster board on the wall that was a picture of a typewriter. So I went over and I sat down at the typewriter that was right below that because I knew most likely we was going to get assigned seats and a lot of teachers would assign you to just wherever you happen to sit the first day. And that's what happened. So it was easy for me just to look up on this poster and at least know where all the keys were. Polaroid, the first instant camera. Yeah, but this was usually only used on special occasions. And you only had, what, 12 pictures in a pack of film? Something like that. I remember being attacked by a giant screaming rainbow, but it was just technical difficulties. And not only does today's generation not know what this was, they don't even know what static was. Growing up poor. Sandwich bread. Hot dog bun. Hamburger bun. Garlic bread. What's wrong with any of these? They all work. You've heard of Elf on a Shelf. Now get ready for... A Goomba on a Roomba. That gives the Roomba eyes. Might keep your jog away from it. The Eagles were right. We're all just prisoners here of our own devices. I feel sorry for anyone who never tasted chicken that came out of this. And my mom made the best fried chicken in these for years. Eventually she started making them in a deep cast iron skillet. I bought her an air fryer here a couple years ago now. It does pretty good too though. Only true Taco Bell connoisseurs of the 80s remember the Enchirito and those old school black olives. I hate olives, I don't care what it's on. 80s childhood trauma starter pack. Are you taking the red pill? or the blue pill. I like all of them, but I'd have to go with the blue pill. Here's an example of the original William Shatner mask that was transformed into the iconic Michael Myers mask of 1978. The eye holes were made bigger, hair combed out, and then it was painted white. Boom, history was made. I knew about this before, but I never saw them compared side by side. Kids today don't know this setup used to have the whole house jumping. Yeah, I had a pioneer system at one point. Yeah, if you ever need to write a note to someone or a letter to somebody, and you don't want the younger kids being able to read it, all you gotta do is write it in cursive. Because apparently the younger generations not only can't write in cursive, but they can't even read cursive. I will admit with this example here, the first part of it looks like this person was about three quarters of the way to becoming a doctor. Getting the Atari 2600 was one of the best days of your life. My neighbors were throwing this out yesterday on their curb. They were throwing this out. I'm sure they could have put it on eBay and at least got a few bucks out of it. Gen X Pro Tip. If you see this on the ground during your Hawaiian vacation, do not make a necklace out of it. The moment that my childhood was ruined. For as many of the 69 Dodge Chargers that they destroyed during the filming of the Dukes of Hazard, I wouldn't have thought that they actually done any of the stunts this way. We're this old. How many people can tell me what this is? The most reliable truck ever built. That's true. Those things would last forever. This is probably a recent photo taken of one from the 80s. When you went to a music store in the 80s and had to wait for them to take this thing off of your cassette. 
Here's a friendly PSA. Friends don't tell friends that 1980 was 44 years ago. At some point in your childhood, you and your friends went outside to play together for the last time, and nobody knew it. When you think about it, this is true. And the worst part is, I can't remember when the last time was. Who's old enough to remember when these came wrapped in tin foil? Yeah, they did. And there was a lot of other stuff that was wrapped in a similar tin foil type package too. And it tasted a lot better than all this stuff today that's just wrapped in this cheap plastic. This was YouTube in the 90s. That is a 100% true and accurate description of what America's Home Funniest Videos was back in the day. And that's what made it so popular too. It's February 1976, and this weirdo who looks like he has jaundice just came on TV in the middle of cartoons and told me to fill our ice trays with orange juice. I remember doing that when I was a kid, and we also used Kool-Aid and other things to make different flavors. This is what real high fidelity sound looks like. 80s toys. Nothing will ever compare. And these days, we wish we'd have left some of the toys in their original packaging and put them in a box and saved them all the way until now. But some of them's worth some pretty good money. It's time to break out the snow socks. Unfortunately, this is true. They're giving snow, ice, and winds here in the next week or so. And for some of you in different parts of the country, you've already had a lot of snow, rain, and other weather. And then today, we had a tornado in January down in Florida. I pray everyone's okay down there. If you know who he is, you're old. I really hope drive-in theaters make a comeback. That'd be really cool if they did. It's kind of sad to see another little piece of history just kind of faded away. Unless you were there in 1982, you can't even imagine how baller this setup was. Fisher Price Family Farm. Who remembers what was so special about the barn doors? Gen X saying, okay, Boomer, since the 1980s. You can find this and other designs in the Acorn Stash store. Link in the description. All of this would have cost $153.02 in 1983. Yeah, but if you adjusted for inflation, today that'd probably be over $1,000. In my opinion, this was one of the best 80s movie series ever made. Welcome to your 40s. Kurt Londoner is 78 years old now. Have a nice day. Jenny was at Walmart. This sci-fi comedy warmed our hearts when we saw it as kids. Now it seems like no one has ever heard of it. And that is true for some reason. If you know the title, you know what to do. We didn't know how good we had it. No, we didn't know. It was a far better time back then. It's always easy looking back, though. I'm glad I grew up in the 80s and 90s. I did so much stupid, and there's no record of it anywhere. Yeah, these days, you literally can't do anything without there being a record of it somewhere. But most often, it's people putting it on their own social media pages. How many of you know what this was for, and what channel did you have to turn your TV to in order to use it? Drop it down in the comments. They were preparing us for self-checkout the whole time. What do you guys think of self-checkouts? I mean, if you got a couple items and there's long lines, yeah, okay, then I think you should get a discount. Worse yet, how many of you guys been to all these self-checkouts? I hate those things, because every three seconds it's telling you to scan your next item or pay. I'm like, would you just give me a second, let me put my groceries in a bag first? So annoying. Even if you didn't have this on your coffee table, you knew someone who did. Yes, I did. And they were kind of cool, too. This is how you shared music you recorded from the radio in the 80s. I had a whole case of mixtapes that I made and I actually labeled each one by volume number and wrote what songs was on them. Remember when Pizza Hut pan pizzas were basically a culinary delicacy? They'd bring them out in real skillets that was piping hot at 700 degrees Fahrenheit 
right as your third song kicked in on the jukebox after you played a game of Galica. We were royalty. They were the best pizzas. Especially when you got a free personal pan from the Bucket Club. When you visit a museum and you see the computer you used in grade school on display. That's kind of sad, actually. They were basically a typewriter with a TV screen. Look, Goonies, we made it back to the 80s. If you know, you know. If you recognize this scene, then that means you've seen one of the funniest films that was ever made. What is this device? When will school start teaching about the great scientific minds of the 1980s? That's a good question. They were certainly a whole lot smarter than today's so-called scientists. Take me back to the 80s. Two truths about the 80s. Malls were awesome, and the record store was their heartbeat. Back in the day, you wouldn't hardly see one vacant store location in the whole mall. These days, for what few malls is even left, half the whole place is empty. Hi, welcome to Chuck E. Cheese. Everything is visibly dirty, and our mascot is a rat. Eat some pizza near a seizing child. Come on down for some rat pizza at our child casino. You know, when you think about it, that's actually exactly what it was. A casino for children. And it was legal. Kids today will never know what up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select, and start means. If you know what it is, drop it in the comments. Dear kids, her name was Lady Elaine Fairchild, and she was terrifying. What great PBS show did she come from? Shout out to the adult on the porch who watched this entire scene unfold and just sat there. Yeah, that was just part of the 80s. I love the fact of the reactions on the girls' faces. The first one looks like she's getting ready to give the Pledge of Allegiance. The second one don't really have any reaction. The third one is praying. The fourth one is just shocked. And the fifth one is crying. Cures for every sickness I had as a kid. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, that covered just about anything. What movies come to mind when you see this man? The first two that I think of is Ghostbusters and Groundhog's Day. When I was a kid, there were no phones or tablets. We read cereal boxes at breakfast. Yeah, and did the little games and other things they had on there. Today, in 1987, your school served you this for lunch, and you were excited about it. Yep, absolutely. It's one of the best lunches we'd have that week. Be honest, how many of you knew that Smurfette was not actually a real Smurf? She was created by Gargamel in an attempt to find the Smurf's village. It was Papa Smurf who performed a spell on her, thus making her a real Smurf. She also originally had black hair. Well, I'll be honest, I didn't know this. I don't know if I missed an episode, or if I just can't remember. But I didn't know this. Remember the saying? It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Yep, they had to run that every night on the TV. Just for most parents to remember that they had kids. That was just how it was back in the 80s. Growing up in the 80s, this was our GoFundMe. Well, by this time of the year, we'd usually be shoveling snow. You can't hear a picture. Me. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon gal. This exact casserole dish that every 80s mom owned. My mom used to have one of these, except the flowers were different. Dennis from Jurassic Park was secretly cosplaying as characters from the Goonies. I wonder if this actually was intentional. Because if it was, that's awesome. It certainly looks intentional, that's for sure. How it feels when I'm telling a story about something that happened in my 20s, and some grown <coughs> person next to me says, Oh, that's the year I was born. Life before microwave popcorn. I still use one of these. I actually don't even have a microwave. I miss these kinds of commercials. 
Yeah, even the commercials back then were cool, and a lot of them were pretty funny. I'm a kid at heart, and a senior citizen's at knees and back. I wish this wasn't so true. I finally remember what Zoom meetings remind me of. Who was supposed to bend on the bottom right? Either they were too short, or they fell. And one day we said, this will be the last coin. And it was. Kinda sad when you think about it. How many of you remember the last arcade that you played? Drop it in the comments. Here's another one of the G.I. Joe aircraft carriers. I'd love to know what those are worth these days. Because they have to be pretty rare. Defense contractors right now. Not sure what this slide's doing in here. This actually goes with my Laugh While the World Burns series. But it is true. McDonald's in 1980. McDonald's 2023. McDonald's today looks like fast food for a prison. How many people remember the bowl of candy that your grandma always kept? On the table, usually in a glass bowl with a lid. Grandma's house in the 80s, starter pack. Every one of these is very true. I wish we still had some of that Tupperware. It lasts forever. And the strawberry candy was awesome. Going around to someone's house without calling or texting them beforehand. Well, that's a half-truth, maybe. I really don't like it when people just show up to my house unannounced. Because they're usually interrupting whatever I'm working on. I was raised by turtles and ghosts, and I turned out fine. TV executive. So the whole show is just you painting for half an hour. It'll never work. Nobody will watch that. Bob Ross. I used to watch his Joy of Painting show all the time. And he was a real artist. It ain't like the people that claim to be artists these days. They look like they just took some paint and threw it at a canvas and then sign it and sell it for a million dollars. Or even worse, the guy who duct taped a banana to a blank canvas. Or there was the guy that actually sold a blank canvas to a museum. He titled it, Take the Money and Run. Most art these days is just dumb. You might be old, but are you this old? This is something that most of the later Gen X kids watch growing up. These kids need Elf on a Shelf to behave? That's cute. We had Belt in our dad's hand. Yeah, and that needs to make a major comeback on these younger generations. What I had a lot of the problems that we got today, Van Adam. This was one of the best games back then. I didn't have a computer at home, but I played it at school. Most kids today wouldn't stand a chance. And that's even if they figured out how to load the game. My first cell phone. I looked like I was under enemy fire and calling in an airstrike. That's about the best description I've heard for a bag phone. I had an uncle that used to have one of these for his business. I think I'll make a mixtape. By which I mean a playlist. But look, I'm Gen X, and we call them mixtapes. Deal with it. The maker of Atari is also the founder of Chuck E. Cheese. I'm really glad that he was better at making video games than he was at creating restaurants. I'm in the I'm getting old department. A kid saw this and said, Oh, you 3D printed the save icon. This is brutal. Why is this still the save icon? Because the younger generations don't know what it is. I told everyone at work this was a photo of the day I was born, and nobody batted an eye. If you know where this is from, you know what to do. I'm not sure if I'm becoming one of those, back in my day, old cynical people, or if new music actually just sucks. There's no doubt about it. With only a few exceptions, today's new music actually just sucks. Every morning on WGN before school. This is one TV show that reaches all the way back into the end of the boomers and for the entire generation of Gen X. When someone calls my phone instead of just texting like a normal person. <laughs> the reason these toys are critical as kids. This is absolutely true. I've seen things like this so many times, it's ridiculous. 
As a kid, when this came on, it was time to turn the TV off. That was a pretty unique show for back in the days. There were some episodes that really made you think about things. Back when Kmart was at its peak. Remember when your uncle really wanted that pool table and jacket? So, how did you get into classical music? Me. I've never liked opera. But to this day, I'd watch Bugs Bunny on Merry Melodies or Looney Tunes. These people would take your order, scribble an address down on paper, and hand it to a delivery driver who would show up at your house in less than 30 minutes. No GPS. This is true. I worked at three different pizza places back in the day. At different times, of course. And the best drivers would know where any address was. And we had a huge delivery area, about five to ten miles away from the store. Sometimes taking an order out to a house in the middle of the woods somewhere. It's Friday in the mid-80s, and your parents take you out to Blockbuster Video. Life is great. But the new release that you actually wanted to get that day was all out. So you end up over in this section getting two or three other movies that you haven't seen in a while. There's a lot of movies that I watch these days and it's like watching them for the first time because I don't remember any of it. People crying about stepping on Legos have never heard of Jax. That is absolutely true. Let alone fact, but Jax was actually modeled off of these vehicle tire spikes. I'm looking to sell my DeLorean. Good shape, low mileage. Only driven from time to time. I actually tried to find one of those for sale a long time ago. You can't even begin to touch them these days. Canned air is being sold online. Spaceballs did it first. Corn pops from the foil bag hit different. All the foods back in the day that came in these foil type bags Always stored for a longer time, and it's tasted a lot better than the stuff today. Of course, back then they used real sugar and other ingredients, whereas today everything is just chemicals, artificial flavor, and GMOs. 2024, school will be closed due to high winds. 1980s, tornado happening. Go in the hall and put a book on your head. Also, we're having pizza for lunch. None of the new Willy Wonka movies have understood that Gene Wilder's version of Wonka worked because you felt like there was a real chance he was just going to sit there and watch those kids on a live. Kids today will never know where this man lives. Up until the day he passed, Jim Varney weathered cancer treatment, dressed up as Ernest, and visited terminally ill children at hospitals. What's your guys' favorite Ernest movie? Drop it in the comments. In the 80s, this was our Netflix. Yeah, and if you wanted to watch them, you had to sit in front of the TV. You couldn't just watch them on your phone wherever you went. Sometimes they do make a sequel that lives up to the original. Yeah, the first two or three were pretty good. I didn't like this last one though. Soda always hit harder when you were drinking out of one of these at Pizza Hut. And if enough of you all got the same drink like Pepsi, they just bring the whole picture to the table. It seemed like growing up, almost everybody had one of these on their coffee table. Yep, certainly did. I remember this when I was a kid. We lived in Kentucky and we had black walnut trees. And you couldn't crack them with these, you'd have to use a ball peen hammer to crack them open. But the little picks were great. I have black walnut trees where I live now, but I just usually don't have the patience to sit there and try to pick the pieces out of them. 80's hair. The wind never stood a chance. How many cans of hairspray do you think she used? This is when Aquanet became a Fortune 500 company. Wilt Chamberlain, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Andre the Giant. Conan the Destroyer set, 1984. It's pretty funny how small Arnold looks here. You know you're still wondering what Dr. Claw looks like. That is true. I used to watch Inspector Gadget all the time as a kid. What did you enjoy most about Saturday as a kid? Cartoons, Soul Train, Kung Fu, playing outside. You know, I've briefly mentioned before in past videos about how cartoons today are used for propaganda and indoctrination. Well, they did the same thing back then. This cartoon right here is a perfect example. Talk about a straight up lie. That's not really how a bill becomes a law. 
The only thing they try to do is, well, hang on a second. This is how a bill becomes a law. The only thing they're trying to hash out is how much is it going to take and whose pocket is it going in. I'm this old. Yeah, notice how all of them are right at the edge of the desk because you're trying to look down to see whose shoes it is walking by. McDonald's in the 1980s. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Even they got in on the little transformer trend. The only one I remember is the french fries because I actually had that one. You can still hear the sound this ball made when it hit you. What TV show was your favorite when you were a kid? I don't know. As far as a actual weekly TV show goes, and not just cartoons or stuff, I'd probably have to say the reruns of the Andy Griffith Show, to be honest. I used to watch that all the time as a kid. That's probably not what most of you are thinking. We had a TV with a VHF and UHF antenna, and that was just one of the good TV shows that was on the channels that we got at the time. What was your guys' favorite TV show? Drop it down in the comments. And then, my childhood drove by. Yeah, no kidding. They must have been taking him to a museum or somewhere. I would have just liked to have Herbie, let alone the time machine. Carjacker who couldn't drive a manual car dispensed the lead by car owner. It isn't often that the inability to drive a stick leads to a lead dispenser fight. That's apparently what happened in San Antonio. I just found this funny and just had to throw it in here. It's hard to believe how manual stick shift transmissions have almost faded out of existence. My brain when someone says, I was just talking to one of you guys in the comments section today, and you mentioned that, that if you couldn't find a milk grade, that someone would lay on the ground and hold the board. I'd forgotten about this, but I witnessed it a few times. But no, there was no way I was going to be that person because I knew what my friends would probably try to do. How many of you know what movie this is from? Put it in the comments. Things nobody said in the 1980s. I lost my phone. Yeah, that's for certain. That's one thing you never had to worry about. If you never ate one of these, I don't want to hear you say you started from the bottom. A fried beef bologna on toast? Those were great. Or have it with eggs and hash browns. Made a great breakfast. When things used to be so simple. Eddie Murphy makes his return as Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop 4. Coming to Netflix in summer 2024. With how movies are today, I don't know if this will be any good or not, but I'd actually like to see this. If you grew up in the 80s, you know there was nothing scarier than this guy's voice telling you about scary stuff that nobody solved. Yeah, my mom used to watch this all the time. If you don't recognize this film, we can't be friends. That is one of the classics. Like some of you guys said in the comments of some past videos, it was the Snorks that basically replaced the Smurfs. And for some of the reasons that you guys talked about. Speaking of comments, I do read all the comments that you guys post, and I greatly appreciate all the Acorn Stash fam here on the channel. I enjoy the conversations I've had with some of you, as well as all the responses and the other topics you guys add to the channel. I have been trying to take some of the ideas and the topics that you guys bring up and integrate it into future videos. Um, while I'm at it, I'll address one other thing. There's been a few times in the videos that I'll show something and I'll just ask you guys if you know about it because I just don't remember it. Or there's been also been a few times that I've had something wrong and you guys have corrected me in the comments and that's a good thing. I appreciate it. I have had a few negative comments about that. I'm not going to bother mentioning them here or anything. Uh, there has been a few times when I, you know, somebody would ask, you know, how could I possibly not remember whatever the topic was and it was some other things that was said and that's fine too no big deal um, i have mentioned a few times in the videos that my memory isn't the greatest and during a few conversations in the comments i have told a few people why basically back in 2019 i suffered a head injury from a forklift and that resulted in a tbi i mean we all go through things in life and it is what it is um, i've had to deal with a number of issues from this uh, one of which is my memory. 
Uh, the only reason I'm still here, though, is because the Heavenly Father didn't allow me to be unalived. And that's just a simple fact, and I'm thankful for every day. But because of some of the issues that I was dealing with, it was about a year and a half or so before I was cleared to even be able to drive again. And of course, during all of that was the uh, thing that happened during 2020 and 2021 that you can't mention the name of it here on YouTube without running the possibility of getting a video flag. If you guys haven't figured out, that's why I use a lot of sensor type words like unalive. Just trying to reduce the possibility of any videos getting flagged or anything. I've actually had one video demonetized already, and I don't even know why. But regardless, through all of that stuff, and then inflation, and everything else that's going on, we all know that everyone's having a hard time trying to just keep up with the bills and everything month to month. So I've been trying to figure out some way of bringing in a little extra money every month on the side. And last year I was watching a couple of my favorite YouTube channels. Uh, you guys probably know them. Uh, Zeducation and Vascal. And I was watching a video one day and I just thought, you know, maybe I could make a YouTube channel. So last July, I began to try to figure out what to do and started making my first video, which I posted either the end of July or the 1st of August, which was a really awful video, by the way. But since then, I've continued to work at it, and I think I'm getting a little better. You guys seem to enjoy them. I didn't know if I'd ever make it to a thousand subscribers for the longest time. It seemed such a huge goal. But, because of you guys, back on December the 10th, I hit 1,000 subscribers and shortly after was able to get monetized by YouTube, which was a really huge thing here for the channel. But then, just a few days ago, I think it was on January 17th, I haven't even posted this yet, but we just hit 2,000 subscribers here on the channel. So thanks to everybody here, all the Acorn Stash fam, the channel is beginning to grow. Most of the videos are slowly starting to pick up in views, which is great. There was one particular video that was episode 10 of the Gen X series. I just kind of blew up overnight. Within just a couple of days, it had 80,000 views, which is by far my most viewed video on the channel. And it's all because of you guys. Whenever you smash the like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and make comments, that tells the YouTube algorithm that a lot of people like the video, and therefore it sends it out to more people. So I really thank you guys for doing those things, as they really help to support and grow the channel. But let's continue on with the video. Pick an 80 starter pack. You cannot swap out anything. Man, with not being able to swap anything, that makes it hard. I would pick A, but I can't stand Pepsi Free. So I guess my next choice would be C. Final answer. Is this not the coolest lead dispenser ever? Bonus if you know what movie this was in. These styrofoam labels on glass bottles that were so satisfying to peel off. How many people think the soda in a glass bottle with a bottle cap was a lot better than the sodas we got today? Now I'd say a major part of that is the ingredients. Because today it's all corn syrup and a lot of other chemicals. Some days I remember that Wyona Ryder, the Dark Princess of Gen X, the coolest of the cool, is known among many younger folks as the mom from Stranger Things. I keep seeing this TV show mentioned all the time. I've never seen it. Some of y'all never read 100 books to get a personal pan pizza, and it shows. It's real. Yeah, looks like it's real. But the real question is, can the average man, with a normal salary, still be able to afford this house? Unlikely. If you remember this, your childhood was awesome. What age were you when you first realized Barney Rubble was Captain Caveman? I was today years old, because I never knew it until I saw this meme. I was looking for these in my house during my childhood. Yes. Yes, I did. Let's confuse the kids. Shout out to everyone born between 1980 to 1985. You've been Gen X, Gen Y, a millennial, the Oregon Trail generation, a zillennial, an elder millennial, and now a, checks notes, 
geriatric millennial. This is true, guys. Welcome to the channel. Kids today are soft. I unalived once when I was five, and my mom made me walk it off. Wood grain, the bling of the 80s. That's an absolutely true statement. If you could spend a day with one person from the 80s, who would it be? I'd have to say my grandmother. You had one job, and you nailed it. I absolutely did. That's great. The annual meeting of time travelers. Those days on the playground when you were convinced you were going to unalive. Dad, I can't swim. Not with that attitude. Parents of the 80s. Hanging out back in the 80s. Hanging out today. 80s Saturday morning starter pack. Cartoons a lot more than a Nintendo. I still do this because they showed me this when I was a kid. Yeah, I still cut them up, but the one I saw was a turtle. You can't call yourself a Star Wars fan if you don't know who this is. Ever ready 9 volt transistor battery. I vividly remember these. I always liked these batteries as a kid just because it was the cat with 9 lives. Remember family vacations in the luxurious family van? We didn't actually have one of these, but I think some of our other family did. But I definitely remember them. Who grew up making mixtapes off the radio? I think we all did. I had an entire series of mixtapes labeled by volume number. I built these in the 70s and would race down hills. Won a couple of races too. It's a wonder we survived. No helmet, knee pads, or padding. We steered with a rope. I had something similar to this as a kid, except it was a full square box instead of just the back there. But I steered with two sticks. It basically had a handbrake, one on each side. And you'd pull back on the sticks and the other end would drag on the ground. Depending on how hard you pulled them, would change how fast that you were turning in that direction. And if you pulled them both, you'd just slow down and stop. Sometimes that stop would come pretty sudden though. And if the sticks broke and you're going downhill pretty fast, you're just along for the ride. Raise your hand if Tom and Jerry is one of your favorite cartoons. When dinner was served on paper plates, but you wanted to class it up a little bit, man, I still use these. Matter of fact, I just used one a few hours ago. But it's not about classing it up. It's so that you can buy cheaper paper plates and you still be strong enough to hold your food. And your mom gives you a pre-ripped half piece of double mint gum and it tastes like perfume and purse dirt. That's a pretty darn good description actually. Today, I found the ruins of an ancient civilization. I just thought about this, but they should put a Bachbuster in a history museum. What's your favorite 80s movie soundtrack? That's actually a pretty hard one. And even though I'm not a classical music type person, I think I'd actually go with the original Star Wars. As kids, we used to laugh at Al Bundy. As adults, we became Al Bundy. I had to pause and zoom in because I swear I saw Alf in this <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Yeah, I'd have to go back. I'm this old. That's actually nicer than the one in my truck. Let alone it has AC. Warning, do not feed after midnight. There's only a few people today that would get this. However, with the audience here on my channel, most of you understand this. If you don't understand this costume, you're too young for me. That was a great TV show. A guy ordered this drink and immediately left. Genius. Typing a screen will never be as satisfying as slamming one of these down really hard. I always hated those chords though. If this is the future, I'd rather live in the past. Yep, that's for sure. That's a pretty nice Chevy, too. I have an 86 M1008. 
which is basically the military version of the Chevy K30. One of these has to go. Which one would you guys pick? I'm going to have to say oatmeal cream pie. I could do without them. The official field trip Yeti in the 80s and 90s. It's 1985. What are you listening to? Drop it down in the comments. This is the childhood I knew and loved. Yeah, you went out and played in the dirt, built stuff out of wood and sticks and whatever you happen to find or what you could happen to sneak out of your dad's shed without him seeing. Just one more time, I'd like an 80s Saturday morning. The ultimate 80s coffee table. An ottoman, surface for candy dishes or appetizers. Cabinet to store miscellaneous things. And a general thing to run into. That last one is especially true. Be walking through the living room and hit your shin straight on it, fall off the couch and face plant into it, and a lot of other. And it seemed like everyone had one of these exact same coffee tables. We had one very similar to this. Got cat? 80s kids. This is how we had fun. One of the ways. I don't care if I'm 5 years old or 55 years old. I always love watching an episode of Tom and Jerry. I think most everyone in all generations can agree on this one. We learned how to drive in the snow by doing donuts in empty parking lots. Yeah, you do that nowadays. And at the very least, you're probably going to get a ticket. Back in my day, we didn't wear helmets. We'd just lie there unconscious until someone came to get us for dinner. The last time I had faith in the news was when it was with Huey Lewis. If you can hear this picture, we can be friends. Name an event that occurred in the 80s that changed your life for the better. I'd say the best event for me personally was when my grandmother moved in to live with us. I'd never seen this glass in one store. But growing up, it was legendary. You know, this is true. It was like everybody had this set of glasses. But now that I think about it, I don't know if I ever saw it for sale in any store anywhere. Did everyone order this from the JCPenney's catalog or what? You can only bring back one. I'm pretty sure I know what most people will pick. So I'm not going to say anything here. But you guys drop your choice down in the comments. At least one person in your family had this in the late 80s and early 90s. What the water hose in the house. I think somebody better go turn that water off or you're going to have a flood in the house. More than that, you're going to have to drain half that back down. I could just see a kid running there and jump on the bed and the whole thing pop. But yeah, I had a cousin that had a water bed. I'd always wanted one, but I slept on it one night and I never wanted one ever again. I think my back still hurts because sleeping on that thing. Talking to late millennials and Gen Z. When I fell, nothing would happen to me. I wasn't delicate like you kids. You could eat like a king at Ponderosa. I remember when I worked at Circuit City in Indianapolis. There was a Ponderosa just over from the store. And I'd usually get the 10 ounce sirloin steak dinner. This was long before social networks and texting. You would meet new friends at these hubs, places like Capitol Records Swap Meets, where you'd buy bootleg albums and posters on Saturday nights, or Okie Dog, this place with the nastiest chili dogs you'll ever eat. Music was definitely a way to find out if someone was a person you'd want to hang out with. Quote and photo by artist John Brian King. That's kind of how we did things back then, isn't it? The original Ghostbusters movie set in 1984. No matter how much you love animals, you've tried to... This dog. And I could swear that there was a version at some point. But you actually could. I mean, it's not like it unalived it or stopped the game. It was more like you just flapped it. And they'd make this funny face and then disappear and then continue on. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but... I could have swore that you could. 
someone bites the dust. Queen, there is another. That was a good song. Me and my cousins used to play that song all the time on the jukebox when we were shooting pole. I'm this old. Yep. The Simpsons own this home on a single salary from a husband who didn't go to college. This was considered normal in 1989 when the show began. As far as for trying to get a job these days, the best thing that younger guys could do is not go to college at all. Go find a good trade school or find a job where you're a paid apprentice. You'll have a lot better work, a lot better pay, won't have all the college debt, and you won't have wasted 4 to 12 years of your life. Let's settle this. The best old school flavor goes to... That is a difficult choice. Grape, orange, and watermelon were the best three in my opinion. If I had to choose one, I guess my vote would go to watermelon. So that's one vote to watermelon. Which one do you guys vote for? If this video brought you a smile, please share it with someone else. Check out my other videos here on the channel, stored in Acorn Stash. I thank you all for watching, everyone stay safe, and I hope this video has brightened up your day. Until next time, this is Acorn, signing off.